Hello again and welcome to another video about the procedural uh, planet asset for Unity. This time I'm going to cover a boring topic, the <laughs> manual, uh, but uh, I think it's uh, necessary to point a few things out. So I've been working on this asset for a long time now, about two years since I started, or even more if you uh, count the preparations. And along the way I've bumped into so many things that uh, I didn't expect first of all and that I had to resolve along the way. That's resulted in a few things architecturally being the way they are so I want to point out uh, to you what that is and why it is and I've documented that as well in this procedural planets manual that you can find under the documentation folder so I just want to open that and mention a few things it's a pdf and instead of it being a, a long like document I decided to just do it into like more compressed slides and first of all I want to point out that this is an alpha version so there will be bugs and not all features have been implemented yet so uh, please report any uh, bugs and if you need any support just uh, contact support at infensia.com uh, So Some very important things to point out is that if you change things like the blueprint order the blueprint configuration Or if you add and remove blueprints and if you change procedural material arrays uh, That will change the appearance of planets uh, from a random perspective that you uh, have already created in the past the only thing to help that out is that uh, when you export planet settings, uh, actually all parameters are included, uh, even uh, the ones that haven't been overridden. So you should be able to import planets anyway. It's just that all the parameters will end up being overridden rather than uh, relying on the uh, randomness of it. If you've created a lot of planets based solely on the random seed and you do changes uh, to these core components, then uh, the planets will look different next time you uh, you try to spawn them. So that's very important to point out. Also, the appearance of the planets created during the alpha release uh, will not look the same and might not even work after I do future updates because I might uh, end up having to, uh, to rework materials and properties. And this is why it's taken as long as it has to release the alpha version because uh, I know it's been awaited for a long time and people have been waiting for it, but I just haven't been able to release it till at this stage because there would have been so many breaking changes i think so a few good to know things is uh, gas planets are not yet implemented it's only solid planets even though you can make the solid planet look a, li a little bit gas like uh, unity reset button uh, in the inspector so this one uh, won't work for planets uh, if you click on uh, this little thing here to reset uh, a game object that uh, does not, it's not supported. It breaks uh, a few things, so I may fix that in the future. And then uh, when new planets are created, they'll uh, end up with a solid color during the rebuild. Um, you might want to hide planets until they're fully built. Uh, there are some uh, tutorials that I've put together to mention how to uh, uh, to get a, a callback method to, uh, to get a notification when the textures are done building. So if you don't like the look of it, uh, then, uh, then you can do that. You cannot edit uh, prefabs of planets that have not been instantiated. So when you uh, have a planet here, it's disabled because uh, also the nature of serialization in Unity and uh, how the all the properties uh, are stored, it, it's not supported to edit them in as a prefab. So you have to instantiate the planet into a scene to to edit all the parameters or properties. At linear color space will look different from gamma color space. Uh, the asset works in both, but uh, it's more of, again, that's more the nature of the the differences of the color space themselves. They, they simply look different, so they work in both. So you need to pick a workflow, uh, a color space that uh, suits your need. And finally, planetary, planetary rings cannot be rotated around any axis at the moment. So when you have a planetary ring around a planet, they can only uh, for the initial release uh, be around the y-axis and on the x-plane uh, or in the x-z-plane and um, I will likely fix that uh, it's uh, some matrix matrix rotations that I need to take care of but for now even if you try to rotate uh, this game up let's see and here's the planet and here's the ring so even if you try to rotate this it won't allow any rotations. Um, the reason for that is that the rings actually have to be split up into two uh, due to how it's sorted. Um, as you can see, you have a ring that potentially could be going behind this uh, semi-transparent uh, atmosphere, and you also have a ring that can go in front. 
and when you have transparent materials like both the ring and the atmosphere, uh, if it was one solid object, this ring, uh, it would uh, break the atmosphere look. It would uh, basically render the ring and then it would render this uh, atmosphere, but then it would remove the ring and just put black behind it instead because, uh, because of how uh, sorting works in transparency. So the rings are split into two halves uh, and aligned towards the camera. And I will fix that so you can rotate the rings anyway uh, around uh, the planet axis. But for now, it's not supported yet. Also, platform-wise, uh, I've tested it on Windows and Android, and Windows is fully supported. On Android, you can use linear color space only if you use Android version 4 and above, or 4.3 and above with OpenGL ES3 or the Vulkan engine. And uh, gamma color space will uh, work for all, all supported uh, Android versions and OpenGL versions. It should, in theory, work on the Mac, Linux, Xbox One, PS4 and iOS because they all support the procedural t uh, materials that are used. But I haven't been able to test on those yet. I will be testing Mac uh, and iOS, uh, especially first. The consoles, I don't have any ability to test yet. And finally, there are some platforms that are not supported, the WebGL, for example. And that's because uh, uh, Unity doesn't uh, allow procedural material creation. They do support uh, the procedural materials to some extent uh, because you can they can be baked at uh, runtime but uh, and then included as just a, a texture but that that's no good for for these planets so it's just not supported due to limitations and uh, again linear or gamma workflow i mentioned to you uh, you should uh, there's documentation for unity you should read up uh, on which color space you need to work with um, and uh, and see how that affects you and all the scripts are written in C sharp and uh, they're all in the namespace called procedural planets. So you need to have the directive using procedural planets in the um, in your scripts if you want to be able to access um, the classes and methods in uh, in this. Or you can use the fully qualified name as well, like procedural planets dot planet dot and so forth. But the easiest way is to just use the using procedural planets directive. And uh, as mentioned in some of the other videos as well, you need to keep a persistent manager component in all the scenes or at all times that you need to work with the planets. Uh, so that's an important thing because that controls the configuration and the uh, texture baking and things. So just a brief touch on from an architectural perspective. And so the manager is uh, one of the main engines. When I initially created the uh, the planets, it was just planets by themselves, but uh, I realized quite quickly that I needed uh, this blueprint feature, like a repository of blueprint or templates for planets, because a fully randomized planet looks like junk. <laughs> uh, if you just let all parameters go from, you know, across the entire span, then 99% of the planets will just look like, uh, I don't know, <laughs> a box of crayons or something, just like colors all over the place. and. Uh, weird so you probably want to use the blueprints to have for example terrestrial planets or desert planets or ice planets because that limits the random restrict or that restricts the randomness to only select certain types of parameters and only certain textures for these uh, blueprints so the manager uh, illustrated here as just like a, a concept uh, box there's no real science to this picture but it's just to get <clears throat> an idea that it has these components called blueprints for planets uh, and for the optional rings and it also has procedural material array uh, so it keeps track of all the potential materials that can be used on a planets and also settings like uh, resolution of textures to be used there are some internal methods that you don't really need to care about but uh, know that they exist because the uh, this manager when a when a planet is spawned or created or instantiated then uh, it'll send a request and bake the manager will bake the textures and send copies back to the planet uh, because it needs to have those procedural materials uh, to generate textures for the next planet and the next and the next. So that uh, that happens, uh, that's the manager's responsibility here to, to take care of and bake those textures. The main public method that you want to be able to use is the create planet uh, method and that you can that's a public uh, method that you can call from any script and basically say, hey, create a planet at this location, either a fully random one or a specific seed, random seed value, or a specific seed with the specific blueprint. Or finally, also, you could uh, spawn a planet that has a, 
an entire configuration string in the JSON format submitted to it as well to create an exact planet. So on the following slides, uh, it'll go through. I've already covered this in um, some of the tutorial videos, so I won't do it again, but uh, it'll um, you can read about it, uh, about the different sections of the manager in the inspector here. And uh, oh yeah, as I mentioned for the create planet method, the, the, you would call it like this manager.instance uh, create planets and then add a position or with a seed or with a seed and a blueprint name. This is a string value or uh, with a JSON string. Build texture we talked about and the blueprints, why they exist and how you create them. There are some videos that I created for that as well. Uh, some touches on the the need for the material arrays and the settings. If you've watched the videos up until now, you would have uh, seen this already, but uh, there are also some, some uh, pages in here, how to get started, how to get the manager into the scene and how to create your first uh, random planet. And it also explains a little bit about how to modify the different uh, settings or the uh, properties for a planet, how you override them. And uh, some details about the export and importing of planets. Again, this is covered in videos already, but uh, you can also read about it in this PDF. And uh, some description about the blueprints and uh, how to operate uh, the inspector on the manager for the blueprints. More details about the planet blueprints and uh, again, uh, the video will have covered this. The procedural materials array, some more details on that one. The texture resolutions. And then it just goes into uh, describing all the properties for a planet. Uh, what the name is and what it does uh, with a short description. What sort of an impact it, it has. I think the best thing for you to do is just to, to create a planet and then start pulling these sliders uh, for the planet and see how it affects it. Uh, but you can also read... So here, for example, the planet blueprint, uh, you know, what's that used for? Alienization. And as it says here, that's basically just a hue shifter to shift. So if you have a planet that's got a desert and a forest, if you start pulling the slider, it'll turn the forest purple and uh, the desert green, maybe, or uh, orange. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> so it'll tell you what it is. And uh, it also contains within brackets here. So if you change the planet blueprint, it'll rebuild everything. So that'll take some time. If you change the alienization, it'll rebuild two textures, the biome one and two, so that'll take some time as well. If it says shader only, that's a, a low cost change. So you can pull those sliders or even operate them via scripts and have them modified in real time. So here it just goes through the uh, property shaders, uh, sorry, the planet properties. And it finishes uh, with a couple of pages where it touches on an questions that I anticipate. So how do you create a random planet? How do you create a specific blueprint planet? How do you create a specific exported planet in a script? So these are all sort of hints on how to use the script again. How to override a property from a script. So if you want to override and say that it should be more water, for example, than it is, then you can override them. And uh, how do you find out when a texture has finished generated uh, in a script? If you want to find out when a planet is done processing, when it's fully uh, looking the way it should be, you can actually get a callback from um, from the planet to your custom scripts, uh, and it'll call this on texture build complete method in your script, so you know, okay, the planet is finished processing now. It looks the way I expect it to. So that's uh, the documentation for now. I've also included this more detailed uh, matrix view of the properties because when you do the scripting, you need to refer to the properties uh, using camel case. So those are all. Uh, listed here. Um, so this is a bit of a summary. So yeah, that concludes uh, just touching a little bit about uh, the architecture and the documentation. So uh, watch the videos and, and uh, play around with the program and uh, refer to these uh, two PDFs uh, if you have any questions. And then obviously I'm uh, available at the support at infanzia.com as well. So okay, thanks for tuning in and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.